Welcome back to Learn SKN, and today we are continuing our look at the CSEC economics syllabus. And so last time we left off at section five, and so we're picking up here again in section six, and we are going to start off looking at section six, economic management and policies and goals. And in this section, you'd realize that some of the, the, the meat of the matter really starts from objective three because the reality is a lot of these other parts of the syllabus is just asking us to just explain not really just discuss not really going too in depth because we'll cover certain things later on individually for example we are looking at uh, the role of the government and so one of the role of the government is of course full employment and so you have to discuss that and so in discussing that we'll mention things like that the government they have to do everything they can to try and reduce the unemployment rate and so when we're looking at employment separately that is where we'll come across i mean the unemployment rate employment different types of employment and things like that and the workforce and those things like that and so we're not going to go too in depth just off the bat yet uh price stability that's where we're going to be looking at things like inflation because you know inflation is all about the steady rise in prices in the economy and so when we look at inflation we look at price stability when we're looking at favorable balance of payments when you get down to the balance of payments section that's where we're going to look at those things but favorable balance of payments simply talks about the fact that as a country the government should enter and ensure that you are spending you're exporting more than you're importing or you're spending you're spending less than you are making right so you're exporting more than you're importing so they can have a favorable balance of payment and balance of trade and so we can look at that later on in the chapter then you have taxation expenditure we we're going to look at that later on also and then we look at transfer policies again that comes under when you're looking at government expenditure and then economic growth and development we have to we'll differentiate between those two at a later date and we'll you, then you'll get to see how they they, 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 dif, they they how they are different and so the role of the government remember this is now looking at macroeconomics we have the macroeconomics now so the government is in charge of looking at the economy on a whole and so that's what macroeconomics is all about and so we're going to look at economic growth versus economic development right we we'll see the difference between the two and how we can achieve the two we look at type of taxes we're gonna look at type of taxes in this video so stay tuned for that but today this video is all about the circular flow we're gonna start by looking at the circular flow diagram within the economy so what we're looking at here is a very simplified version of an economy we're gonna consider this economy to be closed a closed economy and when there's a closed economy there are only certain players that exists within the closed economy a closed economy means that this economy does not engage in international trade so for sure there's no imports or exports in a closed economy because they do not it is an economy that does not engage in international trade there are three sectors in a closed economy the household the firm and the government a household consists of one or more persons living together in one housing unit making single consumption decisions households are the owners this is a key thing to understand when we're looking at the circular flow households are the owners of the factors of production they are the owners of the factors of production and therefore sellers of factor services so keep that in mind for when we're looking at the circular flow later on the household are the owners of the factors of production and therefore the sellers of the factor services and they are the consumers of goods and services so again keep that in mind they are both the owners of the factors of production and they are the consumers of the goods and services that are created through production a firm is an enterprise controlled by one management unit a firm is made up of, of a number of plants a plant is a production unit so plants as in like uh 
electric plants, a nuclear plant, a working, a area to work in. So a plant is a production unit. In economic theory, firms are buyers of the services of the factors of production. So keep that in mind again. Remember up here we said that the household are the sellers, are the owners of the factors of production and therefore they are the sellers of the factor services. Who buys these factor services? The firm are the buyers of the services of factors of production and the producers of the same goods and services that the customer, the household consumes. Right, so we're gonna see, we establish the link one time. The firm is the one who pays, who buys the factors of production, the factor services, and they also produce the goods and services that the household would consume. Government taxes, individual firms, individuals and firms, and so obtain a large percentage of revenue. This revenue is then used to finance government expenditure. So now we're looking at the circular flow again. So remember I said that a closed economy is one where there are no, there's no kind of trade, no export, no import. So the circular flow of income. So we are looking at the flow of income within the economy. Right? The flow of income within the economy. This diagram represents a simplified circular flow diagram. The circular flow of income is that flow of factor incomes from firms to households in return for factor services. So don't let these words fool you. When I say factor, 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 we're talking about factors of production. So it's the flow of factor income, such as if I work for a firm, the firm would pay me. So that's the flow of that income. The money I work for, because my factor of production is labor, and the firm pays me. So when they say income that flows from factor incomes from firms, that's where the firm paying the household for the factors of production. Remember above we said that the household owns and sells the factors of production. And so the firm is the one who purchases those factors of production or factor services. And that's what the circular flow diagram represents, the flow of this income between the firms and the households. And you see how they get the flow operates. So that's the circular flow in a nutshell. So elementary national income theory is based on a closed economy with no government. So again, they simplify the diagram here. Right? They say no government involved in this one. This is a, this is a hypothetical economy as there are no real economies like this without government. In this imaginary economy, there are two sectors, household and firms. The firms buy the factor services of the households and pay to the households a factor income. Households, in return, use this factor income to purchase goods and services produced by the firm. And this is a flow of funds in the economy is called the circular flow of income. Right? So remember, the factors of production are land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship. Remember, we said that the household owns these factors of production and they sell these factors to the, the firm. Remember, each factor of production has a certain reward. For example, when you have labor, your reward is uh, salary or wage. When you have land, your reward is rent. When you have capital, your reward is interest. Entrepreneurship, the reward is a profit. So the firm is the one who pays these rewards to the factors of production. Right? So if I come and work for you as a firm, I should get my salary or my wage in return. And so what do I do with that salary or wage now? What I do with it is I buy goods and services from the firm. So that's the circle of flow right there in this in the closed economy. Household firms. What does the, fir the household offer? They also offer the factors of production. And you see it right here in the red, in the red, uh, the red line. So from the household comes factors of production, or factor services of production. Land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship. They come from the household and they flow into the firm 
who uses these factors of production, they use them, they use the land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship, to create goods and services. Those goods and services are then purchased by the same households. So that's why you have this flow right there. The inner flow of, 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 of the factor services and the goods and services. The household, they provide their, their services, factors of production. The firm buys these services. Then the firm uses them, like labor, capital, entrepreneurship, uses them to make goods and services that the household then purchase. That's the inner flow. If you're looking at the outer flow now, it's about the payments and the expenditure on goods and services and the payments of the factors of production. So let's look at it closely. Let's start with the household. This is the household. And who buys the goods and services from the firm? The household. That is why you have this flow right here. The household spends money on goods and services that were produced by the firm. The firm, in turn, in turn, pays the household the income from these factors of production. So if I work, I get paid a salary. I get paid a wage. What do I, as a household, do with this wage? Well, I buy goods and services from the firm. So that's how we get this circular flow. Everything goes around and around and around. The firm pays the household the income for working for me. I take that money and I buy goods and services from the firm. And that's how we get that simple circular flow for the closed economy. Right? So you get that for the closed economy. So, so I guess it should be clear by now based on, you know, last week. So you get, this is a simpler form of it. Like I said, this is for the closed economy. But as we have highlighted, this is not reality. A closed economy is not reality. What reality is, however, is an open economy, a real economy. And so you realize things look a little bit more complicated now because we're talking about the real world now. Well, close to the real world as we can get. So in this real world, you have multiple sectors now, not just the household and firm. Remember earlier, we only had the household and firm earlier. We only had this. And this for the closed economy but now within the open economy we're now introducing the foreign trade sector the government and the financial institutions they are now involved in the the, the real world circular flow and so you can see all the arrows pointing to the various flow of incomes so the one in the middle represents basically what we had before. So now we're going to explain this more complicated one. So let's go. So let's look at it from the household's perspective. Now keep these words in mind. These words in mind. Keep them in mind. Linkage. Linkages. Investment. Injections. Keep those words in mind. Right? Even savings. Okay, yes, savings. Keep them in mind when we're looking at the diagram above. So we have leakage, leakages. <laughs> it's a linkage, yeah. Leakages, savings, investment, and injections. Keep them in mind for when you're looking at above. So in this economy, we have the circular flow of income again. And in the Closed economy, it was basically all, all in all. You just from household to firm, from the household, household to firm, from the household. Nothing left that circle. Nothing left that flow in the closed economy. It was just one wrap, that one successive um, flow. Around and around and around and around and around. One successive flow. But in the real world one, you have what we call injections and leakages. Meaning, in some instances, Income is injected into the system, into the economy, and in some instances, income is leaked from the economy. Now, those that are in red, the, the, the lines represented in red, 
they represent the leakages leaks out of the, the flow right they're leaking out of the flow income that could have been in the flow but no it has leaked somewhere else for example government households and firms they both have to pay taxes to the government and taxes are a form of leakages from the circular flow taxes they are a form of leakages because think about it this way what would you have done with the money that you pay in tax as the household the household you would have spent it on goods or services from the firm you would have spent it right with the, the tax money had there not been this sector same way as a firm what would you have done with the taxes that you have to pay to the government you would have invested it in something else within the, within the floor but because you have to pay the government that's a leakage out of the flow. Now that came out of, remember this nice circle here we had before? This nice circle around here? Now this red line shows that something coming out of it. A leakage into the government pocket. Taxes. Into the government pocket. Taxes. That's a leakage. But then, the government can serve a next purpose. Because they can also inject income into the flow, into the economy. As you can see here from the blue lines, this is the government injecting income into the economy, into the system by ways of government spending, expenditure. Right? So, so how you might ask, how does this happen? Let's say, for example, the government starts a project like building houses, building a school. Who do they pay? The household. So the money is injected, the income is injected into the economy, into the household. Right? So the household gets that money from the government for whatever project the government might be conducting. Same way, the government can inject, can, can also carry out spending with firms. Because even here, you see that government can have contracts with various firms. And that, those monies go into the pockets of the firm. And so that's injecting income into the economy into the system so that's government's perspective when we are looking at how other sectors can inject or create leakages of income we're looking at financial institutions now like banks the household now the household got some money some income remember in the closed economy they simply took that income and bought goods and services from the firm now, now that we have a financial system, they don't, they don't have to spend all that money on the firm anymore. What they can do? They can actually do savings, as you can see here. So when the household choose to save their money, that is a leakage out of the, the system. They're taking monies out of the system. They're putting it into the banks away from being used by the household or the firm so they're taking money out of the system and that is represented by a leakage that's a leakage right there savings because it's no longer being spent on the firm to buy goods or services this money is now being stored away stashed away not in the system so that represents a leakage same way financial institutions can also represent an injection how what if I, as a household or firm, go to the bank for some money. That's an investment that I would pump into my business. So I'm going to take that money from the bank and inject it into the system in the form of an investment in my company. Maybe I want to buy a new machine, a new tractor, some equipment, but that's, that goes into my, 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 my firm. That would in turn help me to provide more goods and services. So investment is a form of injection into the system. You're putting resources into the system. Whereas savings is a leakage out of the system. You're pulling funds, you're pulling money, you're pulling resources out of the system. Then we have the foreign sector. You can either import or export to the foreign sector. One is an injection, one is a leakage. One is an injection, one is a leakage. And of course, by now you can tell which is the injection versus which is the leakage. Because if I am importing things, 
then that means monies are leaving my country, leaving my system. So money is leaking out of my system if I'm importing. So if I jump on an Amazon or Walmart to buy something, that money is leaving the system that we're in now, our economy, and going overseas. So that's a leakage right there as it relates to import leakage. But what if I am a farmer or a manufacturer and I make some products and I sell them, I export them overseas now, and then people pay me. So those who are paying me for the goods I exported, they are pumping monies into the system, pumping income into the system. So, in, so payments for exports is an example of an injection. So when you're paying for exports, that's an example of an injection. And so when you get a chance and you're able to read the textbook, all this will make a lot more sense to you. Because these paragraphs outlines exactly what I just mentioned. So when you get a chance, read it up and it would be more reinforced in your mind. So we'll study it for today. That's it for this video. All right, you can go back and look at some of my previous videos on the rest part of the syllabus, the CSEC economic syllabus. And make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell to know when Learn SKN drops the video on government expenditure and tax and types of taxes. Those are coming up shortly. So make sure you're, you're subscribed, you're, you have the bell notify notification on and that like. Right? So what you do now, share, like, subscribe, and I hope you enjoyed what you saw and what you listened to. All right? So that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening.